We're gonna go into what makes a good coach and we're gonna start right now. So recently on our subreddit, we got asked the question, what defines a good coach? And I think this is actually fitting because you know, currently today in 2021, there's a couple questions around, is Mark Ripito a better coach than me? And I think that question of just that comparison is sort of weird. But with that being said, I think it's important that we understand what a good coach is. And then that creates this lens that we can sort of view individuals through and try to you know decipher what makes them a good coach here or makes them a poor coach here. And how can we continue continue to improve as coaches ourselves. So I think immediately we've got to look at this video as we're trying to discover and or discuss what's a good strength and conditioning coach, but what's a good coach in general? I want to provide a couple of key examples of athletes and how I've struggled with these athletes, how I've taken these athletes from, you know, basically day one middle school or even elementary school in one instance all the way to this super, super elite level and where I failed as their coach, but also where I believe I did a pretty good job. And so we're gonna start off, we got a group here. We've got Haley Riker, Jake Horst, Jordan Wissinger. You know, I, I put their first names there, so they're all of our friends, right? And so how do we take this group here from the beginning of their training in middle school all the way to senior world teams, okay? And then we've got Nicholas Singleton here, who's a football player. So we've got a weightlifting group here, we've got a football player here, and under Nicholas could be just just dozens of other wrestlers and football players that we have here, but we'll use Nicholas as an example because he's graduating from high school this year, going to Penn State. So when we look at these groups and, and we answer that question, what makes a good coach? I think there's a couple very, very, very important uh, aspects as a coach that you have to discuss with the athlete basically immediately. You can just plant the seed early on and you can provide a little bit of direction based off of the answers that they're providing. And if we view everything as this coach, okay, what makes a good coach? The coach has a very, very key role, okay? We are the guide. I've said this in the past, we're the guide, right? We are Yoda. You must unlearn what you have learned. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Someone like Spock, who was James T. Kirk's for, for old school Star Trek, his guide essentially helping him answer all these issues and, and deal with all these problems. Spock was the guide. He was essentially his life coach, right? And so think about that. We, as coaches, we are the guide. So we have to provide some vision here and direction. We are fortunate enough that we are older. Okay, most of the time, coaches are older than their, than their pupils, right? So we have distinct experience that these individuals do not have, okay? So Haley, Jake, Jordan, Nick, all of these, you know, Jordan I think was in 10th grade when he started or 11th. Jake and Haley were in 6th and 7th grade. Nicholas, 6th grade. None of those individuals would have the life experience that myself as their coach had at the time. So I had vision and I had direction of where I needed to take their training but it had to be triggered by specific things. I think a really, really good coach can plan out this blueprint of the direction that you're gonna be heading based off of our vision, our coaching vision. Now, that doesn't disregard everything that that athlete is trying to do, and that's where the questions come into play. What? That's the first big question that a really good coach has to ask. It, that doesn't mean that you just go up to the athlete, what do you want to be today? What do you see yourself doing in the future? It's, it's in conversation. It's, okay, we're gonna start to warm up. I'm gonna see how you move. I wanna see all the nitty gritty things of, of, of any imbalances, structural imbalances. And that's the one thing that I wanna bring up too is that, dude, it's great to know about movement patterns. It's great to know how to increase strength. But if you have no charisma to lead anyone, you will suck as a coach. You can know all of these little details. You can take a million certification courses, but if you don't know how to communicate with your athletes and get them to follow your direction and have vision, you'll fail, you'll suck, okay? So this stuff is way more important than those actual specific tasks of what lift's gonna make my bench press better. I like those videos, right? I love doing what lifts are gonna make my bench press better, but this is what's gonna make you an absolute champion. So we've gotta figure out, especially as a coach, what is fueling this individual through discussion you play this game. If we talk about Haley, for an example, we'll go with Haley and Nicholas, basically because you know these two are different ends of the spectrum, but at the same time, they're almost the exact same 
athlete. They're both quiet. They both do exactly what you tell them to do and they do it the exact way that you show them how to execute it. So that's a key concept is figuring out what type of athlete you're dealing with. So what type of athlete are we dealing with? But also, what do you want to be? You know, at this point, if Haley was in sixth grade, you know, or seventh grade, what does Haley want to be? She's, she doesn't know, she's just coming in to train, right? So she has no idea, no clue in sixth, seventh grade. She's just coming in to train. You know, by ninth grade, I don't know, make a team, make a senior team, right? So in sixth grade, she has no clue, right? She, she doesn't have any idea. So as the coach, I can start to sit there and look at her as an athlete and analyze her, her temperament, her personality, and try to figure out what that vision and direction would be. You know, and then by you know ninth, 10th grade, she's probably gonna sit there and because she's in Olympic weightlifting, all right, I wanna make a team. And then by the time she graduates, she goes to college, I wanna medal internationally. I wanna get to that top level. I wanna go to senior Pan Am, senior worlds and medal, right? And what's interesting here is that when when you have athletes that tend to be like that type one type individual who are quiet, or they just do their work. Those athletes, they need a little bit more prodding, they need a little bit more direction provided. And that's where we'll go with Nicholas. So when Nicholas started, it was like, hey, what do you wanna be? Well, I don't, I don't know, I just wanna be the best running back I can be. I wanna be the best football player I can be. Okay, by the time we got to high school, I, I wanna go D1, you know, ninth, 10th grade. By 10th grade, he was getting offers from everybody. By 12th grade, he was getting offers from Alabama, going on visits there. So what does he want to do? I want to go pro. I'm going to go pro after college. So it's as they mature, they start to drill deeper into what they want to become. Now, what's interesting, if you have a type two or a type three athlete here, especially with males, they'll tell you in middle school, it's the classic case. I was just as guilty. I'm not pointing fingers. I was just as guilty as saying, I want to go to the Olympics immediately, the first thing they say, I wanna to go to the Olympics, and they're in sixth, seventh grade. They don't even know what it takes to get to the Olympics, but they know that's what they wanna do. Some athletes know from day one, some athletes don't know until year two or year three where they really want to go. And that's where, as coaches, we have to figure out that type, answer that question, what do they want to be? And then that leads to that next key question, and that next very, very important question is going to be, why so when we're talking about why now we can take these athletes what is it that they want to be and why do they want to be that okay they might not know early on why they want to be that if we use Haley she had no idea why she wanted to accomplish these things in sixth or seventh or eighth grade and then by high school, you know, maybe it was fun. She liked to hang out with other kids and it was fun to travel places and meddle or do things. And then now it's because I work really hard and I'm motivated to continue working hard because then when I achieve these things, it makes me feel good. It's very logical. If you would look at similar to Nicholas, it's fun when he was early on. Why, why do you want to do this? It's fun. I don't know. I like to do it. And then and throughout high school, I can dominate. It's really fun to dominate. And now it's, I really like working hard and I really like the reward I get after I work hard, that achievement. It's a long-term process. It's not just open up Instagram and TikTok and getting this reward right away because you're watching people on social media. It's because you're working for something and you get that reward in return after a long period of work. That makes it more fulfilling. Now, what's interesting too is then you can take those two, Nicholas and Haley, and then you can look at Jake and Jordan. You can sit there and say, all right, well, Jake, why? Well, my dad was a state champion, you know, early on. My dad was a state champion. I, I wanna be like him. He knew his dad was successful. His dad had maybe some social prowess because he was a state champion, and that can influence Jake. And now, you know, Jake's basically, I want to become the best. I wanna be the best because I like when people engage with me and they see that I put in all this work and I like when people rub my back and tell me I'm the best. That's fine. Same with Jordan. I want to be the best. I want people to like me. Sounds exactly like me as a coach. That's what I want. I just want you guys to like me. So it's the same exact thing is now we're seeing what is it that they want to become? Why do they want to do that? And then why helps us as coaches to continue to dangle that carrot? So as we're working on the periodized structure of their training and as we're trying to get them to do all the physical tasks that they need to do, the most important aspects are here in the brain. What is it that fuels them and how can we sort of dangle that carrot, that mental carrot along the way so that we keep pulling them through the hard, arduous training so that they can achieve those things that they really, really like. So now that's gonna lead us to that third key question. That third key question is going to be how. So the first two were really, really important to 
just define what that individual wants to do. If we can define what they want to accomplish as a coach, now we have point A is at the definition, point B is at the end result. Point A is where they're starting, point B is where they need to get to. The why is what's gonna help us along that way, and then the how is going to be the applied approach. But one of those key concepts is training. How? Communicate as a coach. This is where it gets into a little bit more of the applied stuff that's gonna be directly applied through training. Four, five, six days a week. Set your expectations and then lead that into improve your recovery. Make sure you're eating enough. Make sure that they know your expectations for recovery. Make sure that you hold them accountable for their recovery, for their training. And that is that third key is accountability is paramount. You can't just have kids come into your gym or come to your school, have them train and say, hey, see you, bye. That's not gonna happen, it's not gonna work. You have to sit there and hold them accountable. Hey, text them, why aren't, why aren't you training? Hey, I noticed that you missed a day last week. Where were you? Hey, are you coming tomorrow? Little things like this over and over and over and over again. Why aren't you training five days a week? You told me you wanna to go to the NFL. You told me that you wanna to go to the Olympics. You told me that you wanna accomplish crazy things. Why aren't you recovering the way I asked you? Why aren't you eating the way I wanted you to do? Why aren't you training the way I wanted you to do? These are key things because now you can hold them accountable to their own actions in their own words, okay? So accountability, and then that leads to trust. When you hold athletes accountable, they actually build trust towards you because now you share their vision and you're providing the direction. So when you share a vision with somebody or you're even the, the, the person who's providing more vision, they have a vision here, but their vision might only be this big. Your vision for them is this big. And you see what they can accomplish before they see what they can accomplish. And by holding them accountable, now they start to trust you more because they see the success from your means of accountability. So those are really, really important aspects here is that we have to recognize as coaches, it's what do they wanna be, why do they wanna be that, how are they gonna be there, and accountability is paramount. If you can't hold yourself accountable as a coach, you will suck as a coach. You have to hold yourself accountable to get better, to communicate clearly, and that's one thing that I've struggled with with these guys early on is that I struggled when they were younger to really clarify my message of where I wanted them to be. And that leads us to that final key aspect. I struggled with a couple things around providing that clear message, but I wasn't struggling with accountability. I wasn't struggling with establishing that trust. I wasn't struggling with getting them in the weight room. I could get these guys in the weight room five or six days a week. But the big key factor along with all this, so we have the what, we have the why, we have the how, the final key to all of this, before I give it to you, you can click on the link down below, you can go to garagestrength.com and what we're doing is we're gonna provide one video email a week from me for coaches, for strength and conditioning coaches. So if you wanna get a weekly coaching email from me, click on the link down below, put in your email and each week I'm gonna give you a little bit of a motivational coaching email that you can utilize to improve the overall performance of your athletes. Now, that key concept, okay, that very, very key concept is with every coach. We have the what, we have the why, we have the how. We have the trust and the accountability that trust builds. We have to deliver on a promise. So if I'm gonna sit there and say, you can go to the Olympics, you can, you can make a world team and you can medal at the world team. You can make a Pan Am team. You can be a division one football player. You can be the best running back in the country. You can go to Penn State next year and start as a, as a freshman. You could potentially in the future, you could go to the NFL. You can do all of that, but you have to deliver. You have to be able to deliver. You have to go back to the how and understand how that programming is, how the influence is. And so you have to play mental games so that they can actually see long-term because their vision's blurry. They're young, they're immature, they're stupid, right? We are a little bit older and we have a little bit better vision long-term and that's gonna guide them to eventually deliver on that promise. So early on telling these athletes, you can be the best running back. And then as he goes into ninth and 10th grade, he is. You can make world teams. You can medal on the international stage. You can make a senior Pan Am team. You can make a senior world team. You guys can all make a senior Pan Am team on the same exact team. Now you're delivering on a promise, okay? Now you're taking that and you're delivering the promise and that leads to greater accountability and greater trust. So this giant circle that gets established with the what, the why, and the how, 
then leads to this full closure on delivering on that promise. And it continues to happen as you continue to cultivate that relationship and develop who you are as a coach. So follow those three key upfront questions, play around and figure out how each individual athlete reacts to those questions. That's gonna help you figure out what type of athlete they are. And by delivering on the promise, you have to know the right training, you have to know the right tools that you're gonna utilize so that you can get to that top. So again, if you guys want an email every single week as a strength coach or as a coach in general from me, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com, put your email in, and we're gonna send you a weekly email that we answer some of your questions. We provide guidance so that you can be a better coach. If you want more content like this, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.